And here's We Haya, part number nine. And we get the lucky reread of Hargrave's Blues, which was uh, almost finished for part number eight. Hargrave's Blues. No obstacles in the physical realm can stop the flow of fix or ruin. One bicyclist, content to move in limited space, dodges traffic, kicks her stand, and heads in to read. She gets paid to read. Not many do. No life is long enough to support all the relationships we build. Kids to cats, moms to cleaning, teacher student, boss to worker. One walker strides down Rosemary Street, pulls his hat over his ears, holds palms open, seeking change. No gesture, however insignificant, goes unseen in a town full of women. Drivers bounce from one plan to another, running reds. Phone calls, calendar notes, and breakfast fill seconds between lane changes, defying death. No effort, regardless of intention, can sow a revolution without mass appeal. Two men shrug, walking into shade. Nothing for them to do but drink and smoke and go to sleep. The truth is here, but no one's looking anymore. No wind, even from Saskatchewan, can clean us now. Some loudmouth stumbles in offering to teach, but none will have it. A rider, bussing there and back for free, takes comfort when a man stands to offer her a seat. No sandwich, ever so scrumptious, lingers past initial taste. Sun shines off a bouncing orb. Four for four, he's another wizard with his hands. He does not get paid to shoot a ball. His hand-to-eye skills have no value in this part of the world. Jog. The city of bouncing hair comes alive in winter as the usual joggers on display pick the most crowded roads to work out on. Hair of every imaginable color flips side to side above bodies that, to the naked eye, appear to be perfect already. Jog on, young damsels, and perhaps one day just the right Ben's driving law student will holler out his window as he flashes by. Then, two days later, same street, same time, he'll return, dressed in gym shorts for the first time in years, to jog in hopes of accidentally running into you. Strategic jogging calls for catching you right at the corner of Franklin and Boundary, as the light turns against your ability to flee. Then, in a moment of rapture, fully out of breath, he runs in place and pops a question. Jog here often? To which you smugly answer, not really. Which sets in motion a blossoming crocus of late February, followed by many dogwood afternoons in March, the quick iris rush of April, and magnificent magnolia May. By June, other moons. Genocide, slavery, greed. We cry for the slavery that led to such wealth. This is not just the land of the free. We witness genocide all over this earth. What can we do to end greed? We cry for the land full of modified crops. We must work to save human life. What will our grandchildren have to live through since our appetite causes such strife? The oil wars that started a decade ago have moved toward the Caspian Sea. We are the dissidents, loud without fear, even if we are cut at the knees. We cry for the news they keep off TV. The grapevine could snap any day. Disinformation is the age we live in, so who's going to show us the way? The answer is simple. We grow as a team, a new brotherhood in the light. We must build the village, invite all your friends. This is no time to give up the fight. They may have all the bombs. The juntas abound. Monsanto is spraying the poor. We must dig our hands into arable land or genetics will foul every spore. Profit mongers have sucked the earth dry. We must reclaim all that we can. Industrial China, the last frontier, soon money will own every man. The kids on the streets are locked down together. Push a bike and you could get ten years. All this is forced because we stop caring, yet some offer blood, sweat, and tears. We couldn't stop bosses from shipping our jobs. The replacement is for-profit jails. Our schools are rotting, so teach if you can. We're accounts, not Harvard or Yale. 
The time is upon us. United as friends, we can make anything grow. Come join the party. Sing and dance all the day. Tomorrow we get out the vote. We cry for the genocide, slavery, greed that persists after thousands of years. It's late, but there's time. If we really work hard, we can stop the torrent of tears. Bombs away. A plane that veered off of Cleveland still had a one-hour flight before smashing into the building that has caused the world such a fright. The Air Force stood still at Andrews. It is clear they had plenty of time. The plane hit a segment near vacant. Can you solve this riddle and rhyme? A uh, Unical wanted a pipeline to run from the Caspian Sea. Their man is our new Afghan envoy. We call this diplomacy. We've scrambled jets to bomb the line. Who cares about collateral death? Our heinous command favors profits, no matter on whom we tread. Our bombs have cleared the bedrock. Soon oil will flow through the land. Our soldiers will stay to protect it. New sticker, free Afghanistan. But this plane is not like Tibet. It's not China that we have to sway. This time the task is much harder. We must teach ourselves to obey. Already we've gone from a surplus to 200 billion in debt. But somehow this stooge asks for tax cuts. Increased defense a sure bet. What's wrong with mass transportation? Or small cars, no more SUVs. Oh yeah, that might hurt the profits of Exxon, Mobil, BP. Before the planes hit the buildings, the pilots carousel the Las Vegas Strip. Does this seem like holy Muslims or agents out to get their last kicks? You may say I'm some type of cynic, but our track record is clear. If you stand in the way of our oil men, there will be plenty to fear. Uganda, Iraq, and Afghanistan know how deadly this game can be. Ec economies, trumble, economies crumble below us. Soon we will have to fight to be free. History holds many lessons. Those in power fall from their greed. We are not very good Christians. We always take more than we need. The rich get their education. The rest of us learn for ourselves. The for-profit domination soon leads to a permanent hell. Fayetteville Mall, September 5th, 2002. In the shade across from Wake County Courthouse, an entire row of folks wait. They wait anticipating the crown-stripped Miss North Carolina and others. Mary, who carries a baseball bat, handcuffs, and 30 bracelets, watches as the Capitol's finest walk the worn-out bricks of Fayetteville Street Mall. The thick stench of racism pollutes beautiful fall air. Sympathetic eyes search for compassion as workers dismantle metal scaffolding, a job well done. Lily pads float. Bald-headed briefcase toter huffs and puffs up nine stairs. Sturdy capitalists go by. Easy targets. Unaware, a local high princess displays her hair seriously. Orange outfits mixed with cell phones, coffee, and power lunches. No rich people come out of the court losers. But many weeping wives head back to Person Street, frustrated by a system gone awry. They too are easy targets. Corporate suckered us. Back when there was time, when one parent was always there to guide a child, schools were not blamed for bad behavior partly because there was so much less of it. One job per house meant security, health insurance, a nest egg, and plenty for Susie to go to college on. Forget the bridge club. Now, dearie, everybody works. Corporate has found a way to thrive in the post-liberation era. Reduce middle class pay to the point of nudging, nay forcing the moms to work. It's not about reduced free time. It's about no time left to even get to know our own children. Since profit is king, the new world order is thus. No assistance if the dad lives with his child. No benefits to any temporary workers. No labor jobs that pay a living wage north of the maquiladores. No wins for unions since 1980. No affordable daycare for working moms. No federal money for states with less than 75% of the welfare recipients working. No job training money left.